Retirement is going to be the future for a lot of people, but most people are not going to retire successfully. Considering that an average American spends roughly 20 years during retirement age, you have to make sure that you have financial plan really prepped and in place to be successful. In today's video, we're going to be looking at the Dave Ramsey nine things to be successful during retirement and making sure that you follow these can ensure not only if you're getting into retirement, if you're already into retirement, or if retirement is even 20 or 30 years away, starting with number one, maximizing your income. That is right. The greatest wealth building tool that you have is your income. It is not really about how much you make, but it is how much you keep. So when you take your income, you minus out all of your expenses. What you have left is going to give you the ability to repay debt. This is also going to give you the ability to save money, to invest money, to start earning money with your money. The more cash you have and the more income that you can produce, keeping those expenses relatively low is going to give you the power to build wealth. Now, we're not talking about a little bit of wealth, you know, 20 bucks here, 50 bucks there. We are talking about maximizing your retirement, getting to that 15% in that 401k. Once you eliminate all of your debt, this means no credit card usage. Credit cards, of course, are bad debt. High interest debt is super expensive. So you want to make sure that you're maximizing and again, keeping as much as you can of that income when you get into retirement and even before. Second one we look at is sticking to a monthly budget. That is right. When it comes to retirement, you have to be even a lot more stringent when it comes to the budget, making sure that you're going to have money for the, that entire 20 year period. You have to make every dollar count. You have to know exactly where your money is going. Now, it doesn't mean at a point you can't spend any of it. And really the loss of fun, you know, coming up with a spending plan, you have to make sure again that you're kind of consistently reviewing it if it's every month, if it's every two months. But this, of course, again, you're not going to spend your retirement doing absolutely nothing. But there's a point where you have to make sure that you have enough money to last that 20 plus years during retirement while still enjoying the retirement that you've worked your entire life to get to. Small everyday choices make a big difference when it comes to the long run. Definitely a solid quote from Dave Ramsey. So getting into our third one, investing into your retirement. This is one where if you're looking at paycheck to paycheck, where we roughly have 60% of people living paycheck to paycheck, investing in your retirement, the younger you are, the more compounding effect you're going to have. The older you are, the more you're going to have to put away in a shorter amount of time. Putting away a certain percentage of income towards retirement with the ultimate goal being 15%. If I have 15%, my spouse has 15%. If you have 20 years of your life to invest that 15%, you are going to be well over that million dollar mark as long as you have it in a good investment like the S&P 500. And a majority of, again, kind of depending on the stock market, but a majority of individuals will be well over that million dollar mark in that 20 year time frame. So even if you start this, let's say at 50 and you're going to retire at 70, you have a 20 year mark. I know a lot of people do before that. But again, as you start getting up in age, you have to really make sure that you're putting this amount in retirement. Now, if you're starting 18, 20, 25, 30, if you're putting 15% off of the bat, you are talking multi-millionaire by the time you hit retirement by putting 15% in there consistently, again, into something that is going to grow. Now, the fourth one, having a long-term vision for investing and knowing exactly how you're going to do this. Now, this, when we think of investing, it is a long-term game. Even for a benchmark, seven years plus is kind of what we look for longer term. When you start looking at a longer term vision for investing, we are talking your retirement accounts. So again, if you're 20, 30, 40, let's say you're retiring at 62, 65, 67, you can almost plan exactly when you're going to retire based on how much you have available, how much you're investing. You have to give your investments time to grow. This is one of the absolute biggest things. When you look at Again, kind of historical data when you look at the S&P 500, if you are consistently putting $100, $200, $300 into that S&P 500 every single month, you would have exponential growth even when you start mapping it out 20 years. And even with the majority of, let's say, Vanguard, for instance, Vanguard ETFs, if you're putting it into a bunch of different ones or even just putting it into one, most of the Vanguard ETFs we see at a 7, 10, 12, 15% growth rate year over year on average, which is kind of crazy, again, when you start getting that 20-year time frame. Now, for a majority of people, this is where it kind of comes into paying yourself first. 
making sure that you're setting up the money that is going to retirement. Then you get whatever is left. So that is gonna be the income that you get minus the expenses that you have. Of course, leaves what exactly you have left. This means living inside of your means. But if you can do this even better, it means living below your means, which is number five on this list. It's a good idea not only to live within your means, but even if you live a little bit below your means, and what I mean by that is let's say up front, you're at a job where you make $15,000 or $50,000 a year, you put 15% away up front. It is going right into that Roth 401k. It is going into IRAs. You are saving 15% of your salary. Boom, there we go. The rest of it is what you live at your means or below your means. That is what you want to focus on. So again, if you have that you know that $50,000 salary, you're putting away that 15%. You live on what is left over. It doesn't mean supplementing it with credit cards, going into debt, overpaying for things, anything that you can put, especially when it comes to disposable income, having the ability to bulk up those HSA accounts, those IRA accounts, the 401k accounts, brokerage accounts, makes a really big difference. And again, really staying in and living below your means. Next one we look at is the get rich quick investments. This of course, for some people, yes, very lucrative, high investment and high returns, get rich quick schemes, um, always kind of come across promising, you know, very minimal investment with a really big return in the shortest amount of time possible. Most of them are non-existent. Most of them are scams. We see Ponzi schemes. Don't get tempted to dump all your money into crypto. Because as many people, you know, within the cryptocurrency space got set and are now millionaires, there's tenfold the other side that lost all of their money in crypto. And I know a ton of individuals being in, you know, NFT gaming, um, being in a couple other places that have lost a crazy amount of money. This is the reason when it comes to investing, it is a long-term play. There's no reason to take really any big outside of the normal risk with the money, don't bet on a single stock. Now again, this is something that a lot of people talk about. I do not invest in single stocks, which I might have something coming up, but I do not invest in single stocks. I invest in groups of stocks. I invest in ETFs. And of course, we got some links down below. For M1 Finance, we also have one down there. I opened a Robinhood account as well to pick up those ETFs. When you are betting in single stocks, you are kind of putting all of your eggs into one basket. When you're investing into those ETFs, you are investing in entire sectors of the stock market, which are made up, of course, of companies. But even the VOO, you're investing in 500 companies instead of just one single stock that a lot of people are holding. Now, of course, when we get into number eight, updating your financial plan. This is a life-changing event. If it is a big life-changing event, if it is a small event, you have to make sure that you plan accordingly. Now, this could be that you're having a baby, you're getting married, there's a death in the family, whatever it may be for the life-changing event, you have to make sure your financial plan is up to date. This could mean having trusts, having wills, having power of attorneys um, for you know whatever you do need. This might also be adding additional life insurance. If you are the only individual that is contributing income, let's say you have a stay-at-home um, spouse or a stay-at-home partner, you might want to get some life insurance that is gonna supplement some of the income, if by chance something happens where you're disabled or heaven forbid, you know, you do pass away, you want to make sure that your financial plan is updated anytime throughout your entire life that you have a life changing event that can really merit the financial plan being in changing. Now, number nine, we look at working together with your partner. This is one of the biggest things, and this was actually funny because it's a call um, that I was watching on YouTube with Dave Ramsey, and they said, at what point do you work together? Do you combine everything with your partner? And Dave really stressed, it is day one. There is no longer a me, there is no a his, there is no hers. Everything is we and everything is ours. Combining it together, achieving your financial goal, achieving your successful retirement means that you and your partner is going to be your accountability partner. They are going to be the one to really drive and push you towards the goal, hopefully being on the same page, offering you sound invest, sound advice, um, making sure that you're on, again, the same plan. You have to do this with somebody that, of course, is compatible with you, but also someone who has the same kind of ideology that you do, where if you're a saver and one's a spender, a lot of times people are going to be butting heads. 
You have to get it under control where both parties are kind of happy exactly where you're doing. Now, when it does start coming to dual income, when you have two incomes, doesn't matter honestly who makes more. It goes into one bucket. Everything is together with your partner. It is intertwined and is really the best way to do it. And the final one in here, the one bonus one, um, meeting with a financial planner. So making sure that you have somebody um, and honestly, it might not be going into the investing part of it where you're paying your 1% to a, you know, a, a um, financial advisor. But when you start getting into later in life, when you start getting into retirement, having a financial planner is going to help you kind of manage your budget. If you do need help with that and you don't want to spend the time and effort to do it yourself. But in addition to this, having professionals like to do your taxes, um, having people who are kind of the best in their industry, really getting personalized, tailored advice to your certain situation makes a really big difference before you are pulling money out of investment accounts to remodel a house, to buy a new car. You have to make sure that you're going to have enough for that 20 plus years of retirement and making sure that you're not 10 years in trying to figure out a way to go back to work or make some extra income because you are completely out of funds. So Dave Ramsey definitely knows how to make millionaires, nine things people like to do to be successful during retirement, and I'll catch you in the next video.